I'm Leo James Conroy. My new single, Plastic Chairs and Cigarette Fumes, is out now. Go and check it out. What's up, guys? Rob here at Front Row Live Entertainment, hanging out with Leo James Conroy. Brand new artist for me. You're about to, you're getting ready to release a debut EP. Uh -huh. um, for starters, you know, I got your attention from Spotify. Mm -hmm. And you don't have, you only have one track out already. Right. And uh -huh. that really just, I, you know, I wanted to jump in. I wanted to, you know, be part of this because, like, I, I like what you have so far. So, what does it feel like to be a musician, a musician, and like just have one track out and have people, you know, already get attention? It's, um, it's hard to say, really. It's exciting because you, you wanna, um, you wanna grab people's attention from the ver from the very off, and then. Um, I'm glad you said that because that, that was what we were going for to try and hook people in and then you want to try and hold their attention for a, a few weeks before you release the next one. So it's um, it's definitely new to me. I have more of an old school approach where I just want to make a full 12 track record, put it all out. But people just don't have the same level of attention span these days because this music is just like so wildly available to everyone. Right. So it's just uh, it's new for me. It's exciting. But um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the next one. And as you, you know, since you kind of have that mindset of releasing a 12 track before just doing like the singles game, mm -hmm. how, how hard is it to pick the right song to release? It is the worst part of the job for me because I, I, um, I have my own sort of emotional attachment to every, every song yeah. um, on, on the record. And I just, I don't know, because you, you find yourself asking yourself these questions and second guessing yourself, like, <laughs> which is the most singly single and then you think well actually maybe it should just be whichever one is my personal favorite or whatever so you just make educated guesses you show a few close friends see what they think and um, but it, it's it's not easy choosing I bet, sure. it, I bet it isn't especially because uh -huh. you've worked with these songs for so long I mean they all have each song has a different meaning right. you know has a different you know a feeling for you uh-huh yeah for sure um I just I think um the the, th the thing that I found is White Noise is the first single mm -hmm. that, that, that I have out at the moment. All my other songs are about um, loosely based on my relationships with various people, whereas White Noise was more about my relationship with myself yeah, and sort of the person. yeah and the thoughts that sort of go around my head. And I thought that was a nice intro because it's sort of for the people who haven't heard me before, they get to know a little bit about me and the things that happen with me. So, so it was it was a nice sort of personal way to start things off. Right. You, you kind of invite, you know, the, the listeners uh, into your life. But at the same time, like, I, I imagine that's kind of difficult to go into the studio, record the track, let alone, like, you know, release it to the world. You get really vulnerable. So, you know, how are you able to, to do that? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know. We just, we just, just uh, have, have a mindset of how you want it to sound and just put all your energy into, into achieving that sound. And then the rest is just just promoting those socials and just, just uh, trying to get people drawn in. Right. But it's, there's, I, I wish there was a formula. I, I <laughs> wish there was. Now this is, this is the first listen to the, to the upcoming debut EP. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit more about this uh, EP. Like, who, who was involved as far as the production goes, as far as the producer? I know you have other instrumentalists mm -hmm. um, on the EP as well. So you know, tell me about the team behind this. So it's a pretty wild story. So my main man is just sat over there, Lyle. Uh, he produced the whole thing, okay. um, and it took us um, it took us almost eighteen months to make the record because I, I got I got sick for a while. I was in I was in and out of hospital for the best part of a year, and so we um, what started off initially as just like a um, acoustic guitar and vocal sort of mm -hmm. demo sketch even in my bedroom. Right. We realized afterwards, like, hey, this sounds this sounds pretty good. Let's let's make a full thing out of it. And then then I got sick. I was in hospital, and then in between the the hospital visits, we um, it became more of a collaborative effort where we we got in extra instrumentalists, we got in all these extra people, and it just took um, longer than I'd anticipated because I because I was sick and I wanted to sort of try not to be too much of a dictator, but I wanted to oversee everything and be yeah, as involved as possible. So. For sure, for sure. So Lyle would bring me like mixes to the hospital with my headphones and I'd be like, we can change this, maybe we want some trombone here, maybe we want this here, then we'd go out and get the musicians and, and bring them in. So um, for the most part, the two of us were working really closely together to get everything down and then we, we drafted in extra extra musicians and and whatnot and mastering engineers as, as, as we needed to. Right. 
So what about you going into to the studio to record? Did you get to do that? Um, you know, I'm assuming after you got out of the hospital or is that something that you had already done prior to the hospital? Um, initially, we'd we'd laid down like rough vocal sketches, but there was one of the songs actually I wrote in between my hospital visits. And um, that vocal take was done. Um, the hospital is, is just right around the corner. And, and I, I got out of the hospital. I was, I was a little bit loopy on my pain meds. And I was like, let's, no, I'm feeling good. Let, let's track it. And I sat here yeah. <laughs> and we, we set up a mic stand yeah. and, and I, tracked the, I tracked the vocals there. And it was just, um, it was definitely, we started um, before I got sick, but we, we finished um, throughout. So it was, it was a constant, um, it was a constant, I don't want to say struggle because it was enjoyable, but it, it was definitely an, an all day, every day project right. for a while. So now you were, I mean, being in the hospital, is, it's not satisfying, of course, like mm -hmm. you're already, you, there's already so much going through your head. So how are you able to, to stay positive about this project and, you know, still, you know, make sure that you finished it? I just, I, I've just loved this project from from day one I, and I, I don't even want to say this project because it gives it sort of a business feel it's something sure. that's, that's very personal to me and right. it's something that it's all the songs have a very special place in my heart and so just the wanting to to finish it just just kept me going and, and it, it also helps as well like as I was saying Lyle would bring the um, the mixes for me mm. each time he'd bring a mix it'd be a little bit different and it, it just felt like very gradual progress right. so I was excited to to hear the progress even when I wasn't necessarily in the studio so it, it was just something that um that just grew and my excitement grew and continues to grow and I just yeah I'm still as excited about it now as I was when we did the first sketch in my living room now as far as the writing goes is, is this something that you wrote all by yourself did you have co-writes with it like how did that go no I I wrote everything by myself I have uh, generally the, the process is I I start off with a, a, a guitar and, and a basic vocal sketch and then I, I have a back when I got my music degree, I very much enjoyed composing and arranging, and I have a, an idea of all these moving parts going in my head, and then we just come and we work together to flesh those parts out. Yeah. But as for like the the writing and the pure, you know, the lyrics and the melody and everything like that is, I I, I did that myself. Um, but we we fleshed everything out together. Now, why did you choose to have? Um these types of instruments in, in your music like I love the soulful kind of jazzy kind of vibe I, like on white noise I love the saxophone on there uh -huh. um, so you know why did you choose to have these kind of instruments it's something that I don't think we get to hear uh -huh. as often today um, but when I do like I get excited so you know tell me about that well I think a big part of it two of my bigger influences are um, Paolo Nettini and Amy Winehouse and like horns are a big feature in their music mm. But also, I, I grew up playing the trumpet, and so I've always sort of naturally had an inclination to to brass and, to some extent, woodwind. Um, but I just, it's always been a part of my childhood, so, although in a different context. So I, I grew up playing in brass bands where it was more sort of classical-based music, but I feel like there's a, there's a very particular sound that you can only get through um, a couple of really tight horn players all playing together, and, and just... That sort of music is always that that sort of instrumentation, the setup um, is just it's just always appealed to me, and, and it's just when it came to writing my own music, you it, you know it's you're always going to be referencing things whether you intend to or not that always hold a, a place dear to you. So it just um, yeah, it just felt right. So you, so you kind of imagine these horns while you were writing the, the lyrics. Yeah, so when I when I do write my songs, so White Noise, for example, when I first wrote that song, um, I played it with a, a looper pedal. Mm -hmm. So I looped the guitar and then I looped the trumpets over it and then I sang over the loops. And that was because I, I'd wanted the horns, but physically you can't play and sing at the same right. time. So it's it's always very much been a feature of my writing. And I whenever I write songs, I'm just always drawn to horns could play here horns could play there it's just something that i i love and the the saxophone army who played the sax he he he's he he, he nailed it yeah I, I i'm a big fan of that as well it's, it's my favorite part of the song for sure now is this is this something that we can hear on majority of the tracks on the cp like i know you have a track coming out mm -hmm. um in a couple of days but you know tell me a little bit more about the tracks that are on the ep like how similar are they to white noise um the next one which is coming out uh 
plastic chairs and cigarette fumes that's fairly similar um not so similar in like sort of in sort of feel but the instrumentation is there we have trombone we have trumpet yeah. you know we have like the soulful vocals that feature on there so it's very similar in in that way um and i'd say i'd say that the whole ep is pretty consistent sound wise in that um it's all it's all tied together because everyone who plays every instrument plays with soul and i think that really translate across all the songs so yeah. there's a song at the end of the record which is just for the most part piano and vocals nice. but it still sounds as cohesive as it does with white noise for example because the thing for me that everything ties together is soul and playing with feeling right. and and that just really smooths the whole record out each song is a little different to the last but it they never sound so wildly apart that it's that it makes you question anything right now, since this record is, uh, since this EP is, you know, um, more of a personal EP, um, do you feel there was a specific song in there that kind of challenged you, like that maybe almost didn't make it to the record? Um, maybe you rewrote it. Was there a song like that on this EP? Yeah, th th there's a couple. So the vinyl is going to have a bonus track um, okay. called Like Ink. And that was a song that took a lot of convincing for me to put on the record. I really just didn't want it on there. I just, I, I don't know what it was. The the few close friends and family that I've shown to, they've they've always stood out and said, oh, that was one of my favorites. But I, and I, I think it was just because usually when I write a song, I'm in one place at one time and I have all these different thoughts and feelings going through my head and I try and just put it all down. Yeah. Whereas I think with this one, I, I wrote one verse in York in England. I, I think I wrote another verse in Manchester. I wrote a verse here. And it, it felt to me that, at the time, it didn't feel like it was a song that that happened in one sitting. But sort of now looking back at it, I, I can trace that as sort of plotting my journey over here from the... So I, I can feel that. And similarly as well, there was a song that um, almost didn't make it, um, How the Hell it's called. And um, that was the song that I wrote in between my hospital visits, just sort of asking how the hell, excuse me, how, how did I, how did I like sort of end up where I am and who I am and and so um we we tried all sorts of different things and it just wasn't translating how I wanted it and what actually tied it up in the end was the vocal performance was um was straight out of the hospital I was I wasn't well when I sang the vocals for that and I felt like that performance really just added a whole extra layer of story which is so important to me and I think sometimes you you don't necessarily want to get the most polished perfect vocal performance or, right. or on any instrument especially when it's something so personal like that right. i feel like you know the more emotion you get out of it yeah. the more you know the listener is going to appreciate totally. it totally and, and that was def for, for me from a vocal perspective that was definitely the most raw and initially i i didn't want to put that on but again it just saw, it sat with me and i grew on it and i just felt there's so much story that's gone into each of these songs having right. that tail behind the vocals is just yeah, so those were the two that were initially maybe going to be other songs, but then it it all worked out and they're on the record. So that's awesome. Now, how soon can we maybe expect this debut EP? Um, do you have a title for it already? Yeah, so the title of the EP is the same title as my next track, "Plastic Chairs and Cigarette Fumes." Um, that's the title of the EP. It's going to be coming out in the fall. Uh, date to be decided, but um, not so long after uh, this single. Um, and yeah. I, I don't know what else to give you. <laughs> well, as far as like live shows, do you have any any plans for some more live shows, maybe like a tour um, leading around the EP? Is that something that we can talk about? Yeah, I'm playing shows um, around LA at the moment. Um, as for tour and stuff, that's something that we're working towards at the moment because over the last year where I've been sick, it hadn't been something that I'd actively thought about. Right. Um, but it, it's something that we're working towards right now. So hopefully in the near future, I'll be uh, heading out on the road. Now for those fans that haven't heard you yet, um, why do you create music? Why, why, why did you choose this, this path in life? It's the only way that I can really sort of, I'm a pretty laid back guy. I don't really, I don't really get angry very quickly. I don't really, you know, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty easy going, but it's, and I think that's probably because of music. I, I think it, it, it's my outlet. It's, it, it's the way that I say what I want to say. In the way I want to say it, it expends a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time and a lot of dedication and it right. keeps me, um, from getting too 
worked up about anything and and just also as well just the just the sheer love of it like i, I can't imagine myself doing anything else right. when i was a kid i wanted to be an architect and um, my, my granddad um who taught me music taught me how to play he, I, i've always been very 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 close with him and and he basically said to me you know he gave me the whole speech of if you do what you love you'll never work a day in your life that kind of thing and I was thinking to myself, like, I could make some good money in architecture or whatever, and then I just thought, but will I enjoy making buildings as much as I will enjoy, you know, like, building a song, as it were? So it's just, music is the only thing I can ever see myself doing. 